the brand new Integra. In this video, I'm gonna have a discussion with Acura about what the Integra used to be and what it is today. You're gonna to learn the exterior, interior, the mechanical and engineering changes, and then we're gonna drive it and see what all of that translates into. I'm Jonathan Rivers with Acura Product Planning. Uh, and what we're really here to talk about is the new 2023 Acura Integra, uh, the actual global small car architecture that we started with does underpin several model lines for both the Honda and Acura brands. In this case though, basically everything above that, including the body in white, the sheet metal, which includes things like the roof, the hood, the doors, all of those things are exclusive to the Integra. Uh, we did that to not only make a unique design, but to also make a very sporty, rigid body and chassis. Uh, in this case, the, while the wheelbase is shared between uh, the Civic uh, platform, in this case, we actually have a longer and wider vehicle. And with that unique body in white, we were able to make some great headway with the overall stiffness to that. It's actually 2% stiffer than the Civic Sedan, 5% stiffer than the Civic Hatchback. Uh, and I think a lot of people look at the liftgate design and immediately assume it's like a Civic 5 door from, from that kind of overall proportions and design. But this car is actually, the Integra is almost, you know, six inches longer than the Civic 5 door. You have to see this car in, in person to really understand the proportions and the stance. So for the new Integra, it was all about exterior design. We knew that this is what customers really prioritize, especially this next generation of young millennial buyers coming into the marketplace. So the moment we set off foot, we had our designers hit the sketches, really create some dramatic low and wide sketches and designs. And it didn't take long for them to per perfect it. And, and we actually showed a sketch in our presentation here. And there was no existing foundation that would allow that. So that's why, you know, we really focused on investing a lot of money to create a unique body structure, everything from the body in white. And that was all to great effect to really execute on that vision of design that we had for the Integra. Well, you've given a good explanation of what the car is really from its platform, body in white, how you managed to design the exterior to align with some of the other Acura products. It is a gateway now into the Acura lineup, much like the Integra was of the past. So the question uh, that I saw during the launch, when you did the online launch, um, there was a lot of like buzz in terms of there's two sets, people that loved it and maybe it's like the younger group versus the old stodgy dudes like me who grew up with the car and had these rose colored glasses of what Integra was. Maybe the expectations were too high that it was gonna be some like two liter, 10,000 RPM engine, <laughs> you know, like the throwback car. So where it is now kind of explain what Integra is today versus what it was 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, that, that's absolutely fair. And, and you know, we were, we were there at the launch and, you know, it was great because our dealer body, the media that was on hand, you know, back in November, absolutely loved the car. So I think a lot of it was, was seeing it in the flesh, yeah, being, right. being there in the moment, you know, and, and I think, you know, it was a combination of, you know, it being released online and then, you know, because really prior to that, we had only shown two sketches, yeah. right? We had announced the name, we showed the headlight and the rear, and then it was like, boom, here's this yellow prototype. And uh, it was definitely polarizing for some. And I think, like you said, some of it was just having this n nostalgia of what, you know, Integra used to be. But I think more specifically, it was people that were hyper-focused on the third gen Integra and just had really hoped that when we said we were bringing it back, that that would be the end result. And that's okay. I mean, we, we definitely all have, you know, a, a place in our heart for that iconic uh, generation of Integra. But, you know, when our team kicked things off, you know, we were, we were given a special tool, which was kind of a blank piece of paper, right? To say, okay, this is now in your hands. What would you guys like to do? 
And, you know, for us, you know, we really kind of laid things out and said, look, it has to have this. It has to be this iconic, you know, lift back design. It, it has to, of course, ha have a manual transmission. Uh, you know, it has to have a limited slip and be sporty and all these kind of very technical requirements. And, you know, if we weren't going to hit those targets and, we, and the car wasn't going to be what we think we ended up with, we, we weren't going to use the name. And so, you know, I know a lot of people have asked, you know, why now or why bring right. it back? But it's because we truly created an Integra, right? A new generation. So. Okay. So here's kind of a question after driving it. I've already driven it and we're going to get more into that as this video evolves. So I couldn't help but thinking today, and I've talked with other people about this, why not bring back the RSX name given the position of all the other models are these alphanumerics you know, the RSX, this car feels more RSX in terms of what, at least in our American car, right? The RSX was still Integra, but why not that name versus Integra? Uh, you know what, and it's it's interesting because like we talked about in the, in the technical presentation where we kind of highlighted each of the generations of Integra, we thought the RSX was an Integra, right? Like, yeah. For all those reasons you just mentioned. And so if this car feels like that, then it does still make sense to call it Integra, right? You know, and, and RSX, you know, at that time, the people in charge at the time were really, you know, setting a new direction for the brand, going to that new naming uh, nomenclature, and that's what that's what they decided, and that those are the decisions made. But the ironic thing is that, you know, this car today with its, you know, 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, 200 horsepower, is, again, more horsepower that was in that iconic third generation Type R. So. The cars today, I like to your point, are just so much more capable, so much more powerful, um, have so much more technology and all these things. But, you know, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, we all have these, you know, posters on our walls as children and we're like, oh, I really want that product or that or that vehicle in this case. And yeah, you know, you go back in time in that moment because, you know, th for me, that was my high school days. You know, yeah, I had friend, right. you know, the first car I learned to drive stick shift on was a 98 Integra GSR. And in that moment, it was incredible. Yeah, right, it yeah. really was incredible. And it was this kind of, you know, uh, moment in time for me that really defined, I think, to how I got to where I am now, because I was all in on Acura and what that car represented. If I were to drive it today, maybe those same feelings yeah. weren't there, but in that moment in time. And so I think in this moment in time, you know, 2022, this car is a 23 model year vehicle it's very relevant for what, what it is in, in, in this moment right now. Um, and it's still really unique in this moment right now as we make push to electrification and CUVs and right. SUVs, right? So to, to bring back a turbo manual, you know, lift back right now almost seems, you know, strange, but that's kind of who we are and that's what this car, you know, represents. Makes sense. We're in a unique position, uh, what I'm doing, because I get a window into your world, right? I see the business side. Like before, when I was on the outside enthusiast, like they should just make a, a 500 horsepower, yeah. <laughs> 10,000 RPM, you know, car with a manual, no safety, super lightweight. Why can't they do that? And why can't they do it for $10,000? You know, this becomes the enthusiast argument. We want everything for nothing, but we want a lot. And when I've gotten to speak with you guys, multiple companies, there is so much money in development that goes into that, and then you don't have a lot of volume to justify a lot of those expenses. So I've learned that doing this, but I've also become on the other extreme too. I've driven all these cars that most people don't. So now I'm like, I've driven some of the coolest cars, I've driven some of the worst, and I have a different perspective, right? So I'm not almost, I'm not the normal person anymore. Sure. On your end, how do you kind of speak to all your experience? You're kind of very siloed, you're in one brand, you're, you've been working in this brand for a long time. How do you maintain the pulse of what the enthusiast wants? How do you understand where we're coming from? And then how do you kind of balance the business part? And how, how do you do that? Because it's gotta be way harder for you because you can never do anything right, it seems like. <laughs> well, you know, um, it is, it is a, a, you know, it's, it's a very challenging role. Um, but I will say this, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves in is being on top of the marketplace, uh, you know, we're, we're attending every trade show possible, where we're driving every modern vehicle. I've driven just about everything under the sun to a supercar, to electric okay. car, to, you know, f you know, manual transmission, turbo hatchbacks. You just, I'm, I'm like you guys, I'm very, that's a very, okay. so, you know, we made it come across that way, but we definitely uh, do our reconnaissance and, yeah. you know, check out the competitive set. And so I'm always keeping that in the back of my mind of what else is out there and where does that spectrum go? 
Um, but then, you know, through years of experience, right, you know, I can sit here and, you know, again, for me to just walk in the door and say, I want this, this, and this, <laughs> even to the engineering team would yeah. be an insult, right? right? Because they know, look, that's not possible given these parameters, yes. right? And so it's always about trying to balance, you know, cost, weight, and investment in a very limited time right. frame, a schedule, right? So, you know, that, that makes the job incredibly challenging. But I think, you know, in the case of this car, you know, developed in Japan. I mean, many of those engineers had 20, 30 years of experience that developed all of those old Integras yeah. we absolutely <laughs> loved, right? So yeah. they, they know what they're doing, right? And, you know, they were very uh, great to work with. They allowed North America to play a very strong voice in what we wanted in this product for our marketplace. And, uh, and I think that's kind of the result of what we got, a very uniquely Japan vehicle, yeah. but designed for our marketplace. Okay. The interior space of the new Integra. As we already know, this is built on Acura and Honda's small car architecture, which means it shares many similarities with the Honda Civic. And they've made no qualms about it. It, it is very similar, like the previous Integra was. So what you see is a lot of carryover here in terms of switch gear. Your steering wheel controls are almost identical. The HVAC control clickiness and all of those inputs are almost the same. The center dashboard layout, including the infotainment screen, is almost the same. What they've changed mostly is the material quality. Things like the armrest materials, the leathers, the plastics. There's minimal use of glossy black plastic, thank God, in favor of more matte textures and some alloys that you're used to in Acura products. Now, this does not feel as high-end as like the RDX and the MDX, and it's not trying to be. It's built on a very successful car already, so they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. They took everything that was good and just tarted it up quite a bit, including the audio system, which is a very important thing when you're getting more into a premium car. If you're spending more money for this, you wanna know you're getting more. And the ELS 3D audio, although we weren't able to do our typical objective testing, I can tell you already, it is quite good. And you can't get adjustment of the speakers on the ceiling. However, you can tweak the EQ kind of position of where you want the driver focus and of course the EQ. The sub in sub placement in the back is a pretty good location. This is far less boomy than the RDX we just tested. So just dialing ba back the bass a little bit makes this one of the better cars in its segment in terms of audio quality. Now, what else do you see? The big selling point of the Integra over the Civic Si is the hatch or the lift back, whatever you want to call it. When you lift up the hatch in the back, it is just unbelievably big without having to go to a CUV. With the seats down, this it's just, it's a cavern. With the seats up and you want to sit in the back seat, you can be an adult back there and sit. And if you're putting car seats, if you have children, this also makes it very, very easy for a car. You can see where the anchor points are. You're not going to be struggling with it. Now, in terms of the overall quality and seating materials, you can see they carried over a lot of the leathers or pluthers into the back seats. This great textured, it's almost like micro suede or whatever you want to call it on the center linings. If you get the A-spec, is typical Acura good, much like the RDX. These seats are incredibly comfortable. They have good adjustability. And with this, this red interior, and obviously you can get the ebony or black, it looks really good for its price point. And I, I think that's, that's what you're going to want. Do you feel like this is a premium space for what you're paying for around 35000 if you're maxing this out? And I would say... That's what Honda and Acura does best. Their input points, the physical controls are amazing in here, and that should make this a very enjoyable car to drive, but we're gonna find out now as we get this on the road. Jack, Integra, show Acura. Me, show me what it's got. Okay, we'll see. That's 150, 150 miles an hour, Jack. I mean, this thing is just it's incredible. Now, I, let's start with power and transmission, Jack. 
You got a 1.5 liter that is maxed out. It's about 200 horsepower, close to 200 pounds of torque through a manual transmission with a helical style limited slip. But what it does is it puts the power down quite well. It doesn't waste any of the power, you know, obliterating one tire, even when you're, you know, throwing the wheel mm -hmm. in a corner. It, it doesn't, it, it really does balance it out without torque steering or creating any of those negative side effects that you get with turbocharged engines that we complain about with other brands. Does it feel different than what's found in the Civic SI, Mark? Uh, they said it's tuned differently and maybe in somewhere in the mid-range in terms of like throttle response or smoothness it is, but I could just be making that up because I'm trying to justify the fact that they said it's different and I can't really tell. I drove it out here and the, I know for a fact the gearbox, the manual gearbox and the, the front differential is lifted right out of that car. The motor is, let's call it the same engine family, not basically the same engine, it feels identical, but that's not necessarily a bad we thing. We are also in 96 degree weather. Yes. It is very hot out, so there could be differences that are there in different temperatures where it's not adjusting the timing and all that. So honestly, let's just say it's very similar to the point that a normal person is not going to perceive a difference. So the brakes feel the same as well because yes. they are physically the same hardware <laughs> that's on the SI. We have not driven the CBT variant of this, so I have no idea what that's like. The main difference, other than the interior, which you've already talked about, is the way this car rides. The suspension tuning in this car is significantly softer. You have three suspension modes, comfort, normal, and sport. And in comfort mode, this is basically like an entry-level luxury car. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. It is a softer car. It's a more compliant car. It feels better overall over any type of pavement. And then even when you get into sport mode, it's not as stiff and as jarring as what the SI was. And I know that was a big complaint for you. My counter argument was always like, you're getting an SI to have some sportiness. Whereas this cuts that edge off. It's rounding off the edge and damping profile where you can go in sport. It firms it up just enough, but there's always a lot of wheel travel there, a lot of compliance, which is great. Personally, I would rather have this setup for my daily commute than that choppiness that the SI had, but at least you still have the option there. So as you said, damping is is much different. Those three drive modes that you can select plus individual, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a three mode change on the dampers. It's not variable. It, it doesn't read ahead with sensors to see potholes. It's just mode dependent, which makes it a lot more simple. There's changes in, of course, steering here. You have a variable ratio steering rack. Uh, the A-spec changes the ratio a bit, which and the, and the rear sway bar as well. And the sway bar, correct. So you know, on the highway, you're not getting into that variable ratio range, but in the tight stuff, as you turn past a certain point, teeth gear, or the, the gearing changes, and it does speed itself up. So a lot of these things just make it feel a little bit more sharp when you're, when you want to drive it harder, which is what I like, but they really, again, the overall integra thing is they're softening all the edges. The thing I'm going to say is we're about to get into the corners here is despite the kind of roly poly nature of the car, what this vehicle does well is its mechanical front differential makes it have this like more, I hate to call it connected, I know that's a cliche, but this connected feel the front end where you can you can feel the car actually mechanically pulling you out of the corners versus electronics doing everything for you. You yeah. get that sensation. No, you're you're 100% right. And, and the front is, you know, it's undersprung and it's trying to be. So you, you get through a corner and you do feel that understeer, but the, the mechanical limited slip does do everything you just said it does. It neutralizes a lot of that and they can maintain that softer front end where you're not getting pumped punished by driving this. Um, I, I think it's cohesive overall. The big question is, is it worth the extra money in drivability over like the SI? If, if well, I guess the SI is 27 and change. The car we're in right now was, let's call it 35, 36,000. Yeah. That's nine grand Delta. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. So is this more quiet? Like, is, is, it, is it bringing the refinement level up in other ways? This is a very, very good commuter. We have been in this car for like three hours today. Zero fatigue. It's hot as hell out. I don't want to be outside at all. I'm sweating my ass off. When I get into this car, it's fine. I, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. I could do a really long distance drive in this vehicle and be totally happy. To me, it's only natural competitor other than the GTI, but that is a German car is the Mazda 3 Turbo. Before we wrap this up into the final thoughts, we've been talking about the manual variant, and you are, in my mind, one of the key buying demographic, demographics for this car, right? You grew up with the Integra. It was that halo car. We did that big piece on the Integra Type R, the old one, the one that everybody loves. How do you 
What do you think about this car? I guess. I, I mean, honestly, dude, this is this is to me. It doesn't feel like anything like I remember, and I've just driven those cars. You know, it's not like I haven't been far removed. I don't think they're as good as people remember them being. In some ways, they're amazing, but in other ways, they're, it's nothing like this in terms of usable. This is way better car overall. Like, if you said, oh, what car do you want to drive every day and you want to spend money on, you're going to take this 10 out of 10 times. But this lacks some element of connectedness and passion, which you could say every car, every modern, like, fun car, is. it's all been... I keep talking about the edges have been rounded off of every single thing here. So you don't have that, the engine character. The transmission is amazing. The manual trans is one of the best in, in this price segment, even under 50 grand. So th that's a good thing. The input points are great, but there, it lacks some type of character and emotion from the drivetrain. It feels very much like an eco platform. Uh, whereas the old Integra, yes, they had that eco engine, but then they had the Screamer. We're never going to get that again, at least in my perception from Honda. So if you're looking at comparing this to the past, it's not that. It's a better car with a lot less emotion connected to it than the previous generation cars. What I think Honda slash Acura really needs to do, and part I get why they didn't do it from a product planning perspective, but there needs to be a Type S Integra that basically is a Type R Honda Civic yeah. without all the boy racer bullshit from an exterior, have a good interior like this car, have some of the luxury appointments and maybe soften it up by 10%. But that's what this car needs, I think, to be to have that image that would get me really excited about the Integra. I think you're right. I think th this is a car that would, and I question it, we've talked about this, to, to be honest to viewers, like, why didn't they have a Type S right off the bat? And the question is, from an engineering perspective, could they use the RDX engine, the K20C that's in that, with a regular traditional automatic and then having a six-speed from the Type R, then you would have to change the front suspension to Type R because there's no way they could put the power through like this type of strut suspension without it being messy. And do they want to spend that money? Are people going to buy it? You know, there's all these like enthusiast questions that don't, <laughs> it doesn't get them the sales they want. No. Would it be a cool car? Would it be way cooler than this? Yes. So I don't know if they're going to do that, but as it stands, I feel like this Integra lacks some soul to it. That's my biggest problem. Is it a good car, though? It's yes. a great car. No, 100%. It's a great car if you're not expecting, like, the enthusiast mindset experience here. And that's where I'm going to leave it, Jack. All right, Mark, let's head into the final thoughts. All right. Final thoughts on the new 2023 Integra. There's two sides to this story. And if you look at the car in a bubble, removed from the past nostalgia or the branding of the name, it's a great entry level car that appeals to a majority of people that want something youthful, unique, and something that comes with a manual transmission. It is a little bit more luxurious than the Civic. It's got a better interior space. It's got more unique styling, better features, and it's still not crazy expensive, at least until the dealers get a hold of you. Now, remove from that bubble when you throw the Integra name on it, instead of putting something like RSX or giving it a brand new name, people have expectations, including myself, somebody that has kind of grown up with that name, including the gentleman that I spoke to from Acura, they're, you know, similar age or older, they know what Integra is, and they were willing to take the risk at putting that badge on the car and knowing what enthusiasts would possibly say. So when you look at the launch, you had an expectation, well, it was going to be something way better than it was. And really what it is, is it's the same as it used to be. It's a, an Integra that shared many of its roots with the Civic. And when you got to the base trim levels of the Integra, nobody ever talks about those anymore. They're, they were just kind of like normal cars. People really didn't care about them. They cared about the GSR, they cared about the Type R, and that's what everybody remembers. So as a starting point for the Integra, the A-Spec, it's a way more usable vehicle. You know, it, it, it drives great, it really is good, it just lacks any soul from the engine. And that's a byproduct of our current generation of cars from regulations and all that. It's hard to get a car anymore that has a four-cylinder that is fun. And I asked John this, I said, can you name me one four-cylinder in existence that's currently made that is like, oh God, I gotta have it. There really isn't any other than, you know, maybe like the high-performance type bar engine. It's just this, those one-off circumstances. So the Integra suffers from it. I'm not gonna lie. You know, it doesn't have a lot of character to it in that regard. 
But you know, like, you know they're gonna do more than this. And that was my, my feeling that you know, there's gonna be more than they expect. There's gonna be more than these base trim levels. And those might bring a lot more excitement. Now, as it stands, you know, it's better than the SI. It really is. It, it's way more comfortable. It's way better to drive in many cases because of the adaptive dampers. It's, it's something that you would love to be in every day, again, for that price point. I mean, there's a whole lot more to discuss with a car like this that we're gonna kind of delve into in our NSX video and future Integra videos when we get it on the lift and all that. But I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this is a good first look at what this car is. Mm -hmm.